Hello, hello. It's that time again, my fertility hot seat. So I'm gonna let people start rolling on. This is where I go live and one of you request to join me. So you have to put in the request to join me live and you will get a free fertility consultation with me. In the knowing though, couple things. I am not a medical doctor. I am an acupuncturist and herbalist. I am the author of these three books, but this one in particular, best-selling fertility book, uh, Body Belief. So I am not a medical doctor, but I'm gonna give you advice based on my almost 20 years of clinical experience and my, my best-selling book and the fact that I coach with women all over the world and have for a long time. And also you have to know that this video is gonna be live. So all the people watching are gonna watch and learn from your case, which I think is a beautiful way to share um, and to heal. And then this video remains on my Instagram TV. So you have to say yes to all that. By, by requesting to join live, you are saying yes to all of that. Um, and I see people are coming in to request to join live. So let's see who we got. Ah, cha cha cha. Who am I gonna pick? My goodness. Um, all right. Looks like Christina. I just added you in. Let's see you come live. We're waiting. We're waiting. Connecting. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you for asking to join live. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, like, I just have to say it to you, to your face. I'm not a medical doctor. This is based on my advice from my clinical experience. And then also that this video will, it's obviously going out to everybody who's watching. Okay. So I thank you so much for sharing that because I know that's not easy to share, but I hope you know how much it helps everybody when you guys Absolutely. want to share. So I appreciate it. So give me the scoop. What's going on? How can I help? So my husband and I, um, you know, had our first daughter in 2018, got pregnant pretty easily after only trying for a couple months. Okay. Um, we started trying again in September of 2019. I got okay. pregnant in December, had a super early miscarriage. And then mm -hmm. after that, my cycles just went crazy. Um, okay. You know, I'd ovulate day 14, but then my cycle was only 22 days long. I tried... Um, you know, progesterone supplements, couple rounds of Clomid, long story short, ended up at, you know, a reproductive endocrinologist. Um, she did all the tests, said everything on me looked good. My husband's sperm, his morphology, I think was less than 1%. So based off that, um, she suggested IVF. So did IVF, PGS tested um, the embryos. We got four normal embryos from the first retrieval. Amazing. Did a first transfer, just didn't take it all. Did a second transfer that ended in a chemical. Um, after that, did an ERA. They said timing was good. Um, okay. The two embryos we have left frozen are both day sevens. Okay. And they're not graded great. So my doctor's suggestion was me possibly to do another retrieval, especially if we might want a third child. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And her thinking was that because they're PGS tested, there's, you know, nothing that she can test for that would explain why the first one didn't take and the second was chemical. Her thinking is that it's possible that I have an egg quality issue. Um, so I've been, yeah. you know, doing all the supplements, I've okay. been doing acupuncture okay. since, you know, our first child. So, you know, that's been happening the whole time. And I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, all right, do I do another transfer? Do I try and transfer the day sevens? Do I switch things up and see another doctor? And yeah. I'm just... So tell me about your health in general. Um, um, overall, pretty good. I am hypothyroid. Um, but, you know, I see an endocrinologist regularly. So that's, you know, under control. Um, and she, you know, does know that we've been trying to get pregnant. And she's making sure I'm in the right range for that. Okay. Other than that, I mean, you know, we eat pretty healthy. I work out, you know, nothing too vigorous, but regularly, you know, I'll do a couple times a week a Peloton class. Okay. Um, so nothing crazy. Digestion's good. No digestive issues. Okay. Nope. Um, I just, 
per my doctor's suggestion, I did start um, a couple months ago, you know, no gluten and no dairy. She said Your that doctor, she has which seen doctor it make recommended a difference. That, the thyroid one or the no my endocrine, my reproductive endocrinologist. That's very promising. Where where uh, you don't have to say the doctor's name if you don't want to, but where um, no. RMA New Jersey. Oh, look at that RMA and J gluten free. I love it. <laughs> yeah, they're, catch they're catching on. Um, <laughs> that, that that ups their game in my opinion. Um, <laughs> okay, so so yeah, I mean, I would definitely do like. So you want to think, you think a couple things of like, so that miscarriage, it was super early. Nothing was tested, right? We don't have any Correct. results there. Nope. Um, and then how many did they retrieve? And then you got the four PGS, like how many were sent off? How many came back normal? So we, they retrieved 14 eggs, 11 were mature, nine fertilized, four made it to day five and all four were normal. So, I mean, I think it's up to you. It's kind of, you know, as you know, it's a numbers game. Like you just, and how long ago was that retrieval? That retrieval I did in July. Okay. So it's kind of up to you of like, maybe you do one more and you just kind of seal the deal that like now, hopefully you never have to do another retrieval. And then yeah. it might take stress and pressure off of you. I've seen day sevens implant and make healthy babies. I know that they have a smaller, a lower percentage than like day fives, but um, I haven't necessarily seen that clinically. Um, so, and then it's more about, yeah, like making sure, because we don't know. I mean, the first IVF doesn't always work. The chemical coupled with the miscarriage concerns me a little. And you don't have any thyroid antibodies, right? That's been checked, I'm assuming. Nope. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I would, and if you're not, like, if your diet's clean, I would probably just get even cleaner there. Of, like, do the gluten, dairy, soy free, mm -hmm. you know, um, the recommendations of like 80 grams of protein, make sure you're getting six to eight servings of vegetables, lots of good healthy fats, watch mm -hmm. your bath and beauty products, like clean up all that stuff, you know, just yeah. in case there's some kind of autoimmune or, and you know, immune issue, if you will, that's, that's yeah. rejecting the embryos. Um, and then I would also talk to your doctor about um, adding in like a baby aspirin with transfer, making so she, sure. She did that on, on the last one. We added in um, Benadryl, yeah. baby aspirin, and, yeah. then, um, and then she did like a steroid that I think I only took for five days leading up to the transfer yeah, as that's well. Pretty normal. So yeah. Benadryl, baby aspirin. Okay. And you got like, what, like a low beta, like a 50 or something like that? So yeah, my first beta, which was eight days after transfer um was a full 46 maybe okay. and you know my nurse was like we're not worried you know yeah, it's, that's it's still really early yeah she especially. said you know normally they, they do the blood tests the next day and they did it a day earlier for me i forget why and then the next one that they did i, I think it had dropped to like a 16 two days later okay and then progesterone was checked and thyroid was checked during mm -hmm. that time and everything was fine okay yeah so, I mean, I'd probably still do that Benadryl baby aspirin situation. And then were you kind of on the diet during that transfer, if you will? For the for the first one, I did gluten-free, dairy-free. And then for the second one, you know, I was kind of like, is it stressing me out more to worry yeah. about what I'm eating? Maybe I'm better off just, you know, I'm doing everything else, not doing that. So for the second one, that was a chemical. I was not on the diet. Yeah. So I would. I mean, it's more like. Do we know that it's the answer? I don't know, but I don't want you beating yourself up, you know, right. and I don't want you second guessing yourself. So it's like, mm -hmm. all right, if I want to, you know, and almost like maybe you say for the next three months, I'm just going to own this. Mm -hmm. I'll go in. And I think it's up to you guys. Like, yeah, even say best case scenario, you get put, you put one back in, you get pregnant, then you only have one left if you wanted a third. Yeah. I mean, things could change between now and then and you could get pregnant naturally. You never know. But I do notice um, girls have, I guess, just much more ease knowing that they have a, like more of an insurance policy. Oh, extra. Than I, so you could see yeah. that. Um, for her to say that it's an egg quality thing, it's like, I don't know about that. Like, I would think more about, I mean, maybe, but I think more about uh, almost like the word I want to use is like oxygenation, you know, like, is there just healthy blood flow in the uterus and that, you know, so that's mm -hmm. where like the herbs and or the acupuncture comes in. I would do castor oil packs, even some mind massage, if you could, um, I would make sure you're taking, you know, and maybe you've heard me say this, like the two to three grams of fish oil a day to really help, mm -hmm. yep. um, with, with inflammation there. And then also taking things that we know enhance, like, mitochondrial function, you know, in, in mm -hmm. the, um, 
in the body. So, you know, whether that's like um, CoQ10 or Ovacetol or something, yep. Ovacetol, something like that. Um, and then, yeah, I definitely would do the Benadryl and the baby aspirin because that seems to have maybe made the the switch for you, but then go back to the diet and just kind of think about it as like, this doesn't have to be a forever thing. But did you feel better going gluten-free and dairy-free? Did you notice anything? Yeah, changes? definitely. So it, that's how I, that's where I would lean on it. Like if you felt a difference mm -hmm. and it did get you a chemical, which still sucks, but it tells us something, you know, implanted. Yeah, something kind of worked. Yeah, yeah something kind of worked. And then also I would wonder what, how it would impact your cycles because your cycles still have never gone back to being like normal since that miscarriage. So actually the past month I took off just because we switched insurance as of the new year and I was so excited. I ovulated day 14. I was like, yes, maybe months of hormones, like kicked my body back into what it should be. And then like eight days later, my period came and I was so upset because I, I don't know if it's like a hormone imbalance. I don't know if, and, and I can feel myself ovulate every time I do. Yeah. So like, I know I ovulate. So it is. It's I like a, a progesterone strong. thing, which does make us think it comes from the egg, right? Because the... Mm -hmm. The outer shell of the egg is what secretes the progesterone once the egg comes out. Um, so, you know, and I always think about then you really got to nourish everything in the follicular phase. So, I mean, I would, you know, the bone broth, I mean, the gluten-free, dairy-free, I would just do all of that and, okay. you know, prep yourself and maybe you say, you know, one more retrieval in the new year. Well, we are in the new year now, right? Yeah. Like, you know, Jan or Feb and then transfer in March. And I mean, Hopefully how do you best. feel about that? Does it? feel yeah I mean that's that's my plan as of right now I'm actually just got my period so I'm supposed to start stims tomorrow okay. um and then you know once we test them hopefully transfer in March and I'm just hoping you know it's a numbers game and that there's not something else going on that we're missing because we've kind of tested everything yeah, else I out know that you are like I mean I would just like like I feel like the diet will cover for it if you will you know plus the mm -hmm. Benadryl and the baby aspirin that chances are I mean if you have another miscarriage with a PGS normal then you know um I definitely would you know request a um you know a clotting factor panel like a miscarriage panel they call it okay. and you know talk to her about like a steroid adding that into the mix or something like that or get a consult you know you're in Jersey so get a consult with like uh the Bragerman office like Dr. Badali or something like that um, mm -hmm. you can just, d d you know, DM me, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully I only hear from you that you're pregnant, but, um, if yeah. that happens then reach out and we can tell you what the re right resources are, cause then you want to look deeper, but yeah. it doesn't sound that way. I just think I would work off of, and like, I think this is, you know, for everyone, like if you change your diet and you notice that you feel better on many levels, then that's an answer that it's better for you. And so mm -hmm. that's how I would look at it and, you know, give it your all to, you know, look at it like, okay, I want to make the best eggs I can make and then be prepared for the transfer. And then hopefully through the first trimester, you stick to the plan as best you can and then, you know, let yourself yeah, you know, do whatever you want at that point. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank um, you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions? Um, I don't think so. That was mainly no. it. Just kind of, okay. you know, if anything else was jumping out at you that I should be checking or that I should be doing or an issue that yeah, yeah, I just, you know, it really stands out for the thyroid. I think that's it. And, you know, ideally that it's below 2.5, which it sounds like she's on top of, um, or he is on top of. Um, and, you know, vitamin D levels are always good to get checked. What else? I think yeah, I'm, on, I'm yeah. on all those supplements, like vitamin D, ubiquinol, um, vitamin C, fish oil, um, what else? You know, prenatal oh, vitamin you. every day. Okay. Um, Are you melatonin? On, okay. And do you know if you have the MTHFR or not? Do you know? Uh, I don't think that they checked for it, but I yeah. don't. So you I could ask for like to check for that, and then okay. I have a guide. You can we can send it to you too. Just um, private message me on Instagram, and I'll send you the link for the sure. MTHFR guide. But to get in extra methylfolate, because sometimes that could be the game changer too. Okay. So make sure that your prenatal only has the methylfolate, no folic acid, and upwards of like 800 to at least a thousand um, units in there. And okay. then the, the fish oil, um, you know, I do love the liver pills too. That's like one of my go-tos. So the liver, mm -hmm. the fish oil, like make sure you're on all the basics. Yeah. And I would, I would just stick to the diet and make sure you're hitting that and give yourself okay. the best the best option possible to, you know, it's nice to know you still have these two left 
Um, but yeah, we want you to, you know, I think just have more ease going into it. Yeah. Especially if I know it's, you know, but a little bit better quality embryo that might give me a little more hope too. Yeah, exactly. Have, have and the mental feeling game. like the uterine environment is as healthy as it can be. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay. So keep us posted. All right. Will do. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, that was a pretty straightforward, easy peasy one. I mean, yeah, still sucks what she's gone through. Um, but I think too, it's just validation that, um, you know, hey, if you've changed your diet and you notice a difference in a positive way, then that probably is the diet that's best for your fertility because your fertility is an extension of your health. And so that's how I would look at it. You know, in her situation, it's amazing to get for uh, PGS normals. I think that's really hopeful and promising. So it's, it is sometimes a numbers game where, okay, let's get a couple more and we can go in and then we don't have to worry about retrieving anymore. So that's, um, you know, uh, all things considered a, a good place to be with uh, fertility, but then also thinking about like, why is it not sticking? Why is it not implanting? And so then I think about inflammation and um, is the uterine as, as hospitable as it can be? And what can we do to improve that uterine hospitality? Um, is melatonin really necessary for improving egg quality? You know, I like to use the Dutch test for that. And if melatonin is low, I put women on it. Um, I don't know that it's necessary. There's a lot of antioxidants that you can use to improve egg quality. So kind of just depends on the case and the client. But I do recommend it in certain cases, absolutely. And let's see. I'm trying to eat a lot of broccoli and cauliflower, making me very gassy. Should I stop eating them? Um, try maybe there's a broccoli powder extract that you can eat that might work. And then also I would try some digestive enzymes because, um, and making sure that they're cooked, not raw, but digestive enzymes could really help you with, with breaking down the nutrition and, and getting everything you need. So, um, betaine HCL by Thorne I like, or, um, yeah, the, like the papaya enzyme extract could help too. Um, yeah, ovulation pain. I mean, I don't want you feeling like extremely painful ovulation. I want, you know, so castor oil packs are so key there, acupuncture herbs, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Let's see. I'm about to go to RMA, New Jersey, trying two more months before going. Okay. Well, I really am inspired by the fact that they said and recommended gluten and dairy free. I think that's very promising. Um, and then uh, let's see, any other questions? What's the best fish oil, please? So I have everything on my website. Go to amyrop.com, look under my recommendations. Those are my fish oil recommendations. How does the Benadryl improve? So it's like an antihistamine and it'll basically calm the immune system from, from potentially attacking the embryo. So CCRM does that as well. That's kind of part of their autoimmune protocol. They use Benadryl and Claritin um, and baby aspirin. So is a light period a sign of low estrogen? It can be, um, or stagnation. It can be stagnation or deficiency. So it really just depends on the case, but maybe, you know, I uh, would make sure, you know, you're doing all the dietary stuff that I recommend to really build your blood, which we don't have estrogen in Chinese medicine. We just have blood. Uh, can taking too many supplements change your mental cycle? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of people that over supplement, um, yeah, I have a full list of su supplements on my um, website, um, premenstrual spotting for five days. You know, I think you want to um, make sure you get progesterone and your thyroid checked. Um, and then I start to think about like stagnation or deficiency. It just kind of depends on the case. But again, and it's progesterone levels or it's the health of that corpus luteum. So you really want to focus on nourishing and building in that follicular phase. So again, to be totally redundant, all the things I recommend for certain in yes, you can get pregnant and in body belief diet wise is really what you got to focus on. Um, what would you recommend when you are in stimulation and the oocytes are not the same size? Mm -hmm. Acupuncture. I would recommend acupuncture there. Um, Oh, you guys are cute. Um, can you share the MTHFR guide? So um, just DM us, Jenna, and we will send it to you because we have a pretty link for it and I don't know what it is. 
Um, okay. Yeah, Lincoln Amy's bio. Oh, there we go. Okay, doctor checked progesterone at day seven. Um, yeah, seven days post ovulation is the key to check it. But then also progesterone changes like day to day. Um, I like the UVA for tracking daily progesterone. It's I recommend it on my site. It's a at home ovulation predictor kit, um, but does so much more than that. It checks LH and also progesterone. Okay, guys. All right, I'm gonna go. This was amazing. Do you have to take progesterone or can you do something else? Um, yeah, you can do something else. I mean, really, progesterone is just a Band-Aid. You really want to work on juicing up that follicular phase so that the, the follicle, um, the egg, and its house are as healthy as they can be. And so when that egg ruptures out, that that follicle secretes that corporate, that corpus luteum secretes that progesterone and really gives you the ample luteal phase that you need. So it really is about... Um, all the fat and the protein and the vegetables and limiting all the other things I say to limit and working on sleep and stress. Like it is the whole picture. Um, okay. So if you want to ask, do you have uh, more questions? Just, just set your timer for in two weeks from today, I will do this again and you can come on and be my next person. Okay. So if you want questions, um, the fertility hot seat is a way to get them answered. Do I recommend DHEA? Depends on the case. Depends on DHEA levels. I usually do use the Dutch to determine what the DHEA looks like. Um, if you don't know what the Dutch is, go to dutchtest.com, check that out. And then I, de I determine based on that. But I'm very, very, very cautious with DHEA. You can overprescribe it. Um, I think that book, It Starts With the Egg, recommends way too much DHEA. And I think that's reckless. Um, you shouldn't really ever be on more than 10 to 15, maybe 25 milligrams a day of DHEA. So you really have to work with a practitioner who then prescribes DHEA for you. Um, I don't ovulate on my own. What can help? Acupuncture, I think, is one of the best things that can help with ovulation. Chinese herbs, um, castor oil packs, my abdominal massage. Uh, does caffeine affect getting pregnant? I did a whole live on this. So you can just go YouTube, search that on me. And it's also on my Instagram lives. Um, and I'm glad you're reading my book and you love it. This is amazing. Thank you, guys. Okay, I'm going to go. But I'll be back here, same time. Monday in two weeks. And so if you have more questions for me, you can bring them then and request to join me in the hot seat. And I will be yours for 15 minutes where you can ask me any questions. Okay. Um, DutchTest.com. That's it. Yes. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.